Hi, my name is Julia, and on this channel I talk about art, books, and museums. If this is something you want more in your life, then you're welcome to subscribe. On the 8th of March, the world will be celebrating the International Women's Day. In some countries, it's even an official holiday. As for me, it is an excuse to encourage you to read more books on women in art or appreciate artworks created by women. Obviously, we should do that all year long, but the reminder never hurts, right? For that reason, I created a list of book recommendations written by or about women in art. Depending on the level of your knowledge, whether you're a beginner on this art journey or an ardent participator, these books may introduce you to some art practices, bring new perspectives, or deepen your understanding. You can use my recommendations for slow acquaintance with the art by yourself, or you may use it as a gift guide to somebody interested in art, regardless of their gender and the occasion. Because no matter who we are, it is always a great idea to support women. First on the list is the whole category that I will call art surveys. For instance, great women artists from the publishing house Faden. As you might know, one of the best-selling books on art is The Art Book, first published in 1994 by the same publisher Faden. The idea of this art service is to tell the history of art through the number of selected artists, rather than generalized art movements. In 2019, they published the book that was long overdue, Great Women Artists. However, this strike out the word women because the editors didn't want to reduce this book to the demonstration of women's experience shown in art. Their goal was to gather a collection of artists working in all possible mediums and bringing our attention to various problems. I guess for them to put in one book exclusively artists who identify themselves as women was an important move toward historical justice. Even earlier than that, the publishing house Taschen got their own version of the art survey dedicated to women, which is simply called Women Artists. This one is, however, concentrated on the artists of the 20s and 21st centuries, which is, in my opinion, even more interesting. They also included more images of the artworks from each individual artist, and generally have more description of each and one of them. These kind of books are great for inspiration, very beginner-friendly, and what's more, it opens up a rabbit hole into the lives and works of so many artists simultaneously. So the next step for you would be to move to the next category of books, which is artist monographs. When you find the artist you like, you may consider getting a nice monograph with her works. For example, let's say I stumble upon the art of Cindy Sherman, one of the leading contemporary artists. So why not learn even more and find a book dedicated exclusively to her oeuvre? I'm not saying you have to purchase expensive books with shiny covers, you may as well just search for all the paintings on the internet. But I personally find it convenient to have such monographs as reference books or as an in-depth acquaintance with a particular artist, but there are plenty of other more affordable options to learn about art and the artists. So let's move on to the next category to find out what they are. Some of the artists are lucky enough to gain the attention of a talented art historian and have their lives recorded on the pages of beautiful biographical work. Often that happens after the death of the artist, sometimes a biographer starts working on it while the artist is still alive. Either way, you can find plenty of them on many artists. But perhaps my favorite subcategory is autobiography, and one of my favorite autobiographies is one by Marina Abramovich. It is called Walk Through Walls. And in this book, Abramovich tells her story from her early childhood in Yugoslavia till the current time prior to the publishing of this memoir. She is not just a great artist, but a wonderful writer. Uh, she's very concise and very easy to understand. And But because her life was so versatile and her experience is so unique, her writing doesn't seem shallow or oversimplified. No, not at all. I believe reading her memoir is a great experience in itself, and it will instantly make you appreciate her work and maybe understand the current state of the performance art. And I am personally going to celebrate International Women's Day with another autobiographical work by the French conceptual artist Sophie Calle titled 
true stories. What I have here is the 7th edition published in 2021. The original edition, the first edition was uh, published in 1994 and it is a, so to say, ongoing project of documenting her own life. Each spread consists of one short story from her life and it is accompanied by the photo. It's been a while since I wanted to have any of her books. Uh, she has a number of them primarily with the artworks or about particular art projects, but they're all quite expensive, so I thought I might begin with this one and maybe I'll collect the rest of them sometime later. In this next category, I decided to talk about one author and her two books. It is none other than Cassia St. Clair and her works The Golden Thread, How Fabric Changed History and The Secret Lives of Colors. Some historians study art as the history of materials and what people do with them. Cassia St. Clair does too study the history of the materials, but not exclusively in relation to art history. Textiles and pigments are used in many spheres of our lives, so the author explores the history and etymology and culture surrounding one of the most important fabrics and colors respectively. These are also very beautiful books, though they would make a great gift, although here I have a soft copy of The Golden Thread. I'm not sure about the hard copy, but this one, the hard copy of The Secret Lives of Color, it's just splendid and the cover is so nice with a nice texture. I would also love to mention just two very important essays that are studied in art theory classes and, in general, became staples in art historical literature. The first one I have here is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This essay is a great starter to understand the material and financial conditions in which women may create art, be it literature or paintings. This, I have to admit, is one of the most important feminist essays, not just in art history, but in general. And the second one I don't have at hand, unfortunately, but there's a picture of it. It is titled Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists by Linda Nocklin, an American art historian. You don't necessarily need to buy this book. Uh, you can find an online version on the Art News website where it was first published in 1971. I'll put the link for your convenience um, down below. This one is one of the first attempts to draw viewers' attention to the fact that women artists are often invisible and unknown to the fact that we represent women only through the male case and to the fact that institutional obstacles um, don't have a chance to women even become an artist. So I would highly recommend it if you're interested in uh, feminist theory and also in art because it um, very well combines the two. If you feel like continuing with the philosophy of aesthetics, then I would recommend reading Susan Zontag, especially her works on photography and against interpretation, which I, I unfortunately don't have. Um, it might be a bit difficult for an unprepared reader because she's first of all a philosopher and doesn't hesitate to use very fancy words, so I usually read her books with the pencil and a translator. But you know, you can actually help me um, <laughs> to tell me if it's me or if it's just really difficult words that she's using. So for example, I noted here, aleatoric. Is that a common word to use? Or this one, for example, anxious. To be impossible to talk about the perfection of the world without sounding anxious. I don't know. So that was a bit difficult for me. But this is the thing with all her works, I guess. She's an extremely intelligent woman and um, I can imagine if I were her, I would do the same, to be honest. <laughs> Just write all the fancy words I knew in the right order. Although I read against interpretation in Russian translation and still I remember it was a challenging read for me too, but for different reasons because back then I didn't know much about art and it was quite presumptuous of me to pick that book. But yeah, here we are now, in love with Susan Zontag, admiring her work and recommending it to everybody. Cool! <laughs> now the last book for today is for those who prefer to create art rather than read about it. 
In 2020, the art curator and the producer of the Art Assignment YouTube channel, Sarah Uris Green, published the book You Are an Artist. In it, she explains the art techniques and selected art phenomena in a very accessible way and suggests readers create their versions of the artworks. Here, for example, she describes the practice of the artist Kate Gilmer and offers to make an artwork with the same technique. Find a big piece of wood or board. Paint it heavy with the color that you love. Put on a fabulous pair of shoes and walk on it. When it looks cool, you're done. I'm at once a believer that the best way to understand art, especially contemporary art, is to try to make it yourself. That's it for the book's recommendations. Let me know in the comments what you think of them and which of them sound interesting to you personally. I would also love to know whether you celebrate International Women's Day or not, and if yes, then how exactly? For example, as for me, since uh, last year I decided to select each year one essay or fragment from feminist literature and read it together with my husband. So I got this book from my girlfriend uh, last birthday, The Penguin Book of Feminist Writing, uh, which consists of 116 articles on feminism. So last year we read Women's Suffrage and Class Struggle by Rosa Luxemburg, published in 1912 classics. This year our homework will be... Uh, I haven't decided yet, so it's gonna be either Angela Davis from Women, Race and Class, uh, published in 1981, or Toni Morrison, and Knowing So Deep from 1985. I really don't know. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you have a great time here, and I hope to see you very soon in the next one. Goodbye.